Hi, this is your host Sapil Bharatiya and welcome to the 2023 predictions series. And today we have with us once again, Kate Stewart, VP of Dependable Embedded Systems at the Linux Foundation. Kate, it's great to have you back on the show. Thank you very much. Great to be back here. Yeah, I'm going to ask you to grab your crystal ball and share some predictions with us. But before we go there, just quickly remind our viewers, what is the Zephyr project all about? The Zephyr project is an real-time operating system that is meant to be used when Linux can't be used because Linux is generally too big or has, you know, there's constraints on batteries. So it's for resource constrained uh, situations and systems. And now it's time for you to pick the crystal ball. I'm sure that today a lot of crystal balls are uh, powered by some kind of RTOS or Linux kernel either way. Certainly, I think that there's a lot of, um, uh, a lot of wearables, a lot of um, things, uh, devices that do have uh, embedded Zephyr and other uh, embedded OSs in them to help um, have interactions with people. Uh, one of the things that's a prediction um, for this next year is I think we're going to be seeing a lot more Zephyr products emerging on the market. I'm starting to see even more. Uh, towards the end of last year, we started a product page in the project, and we're learning about a new one pretty much every week. Um, one of the cool ones was uh, I don't have it yet, but I want to get one, if I possibly can, is a sound shirt that has Zephyr wired in such that when you're touching this shirt, you're basically interacting with things. So being able to interact with your environment, be it like on a video game, be it in real life with colors and fashion, um, I think we'll see a lot more interactions and, um, and Zephyr being used as a key component of that. Next prediction, I guess, is that we will be starting to see uh, that uh, we're going to be seeing Zephyr being used in systems with other OSs and other configurations. We're going to be seeing a lot more of that type of um, enablement. We've got various members that will be releasing products this year um, that had Zep Linux going and Zephyr going, um, each handling certain types of responsibilities. So I think you'll be seeing more of these types of multi-processor, multi-OS configurations emerging, where Zephyr is a key component. And in fact, one of them was sort of already hinted at earlier in this year, which is I think um, Google's Chromebooks will be should be um, coming out on the market, and they should be having um, Zephyr. But that's just one of many that are sort of queuing up here to be using Zephyr in a part of a full system. Um, the other um, area is I think you're going to be seeing a lot more focus on um, how to handle security and safety critical environments, like where things are, uh, critical infrastructure and so forth. And we're seeing a lot of people looking at Zephyr as a component for secure elements and so forth. So I think you'll be seeing more work going on in the Zephyr project about hardening up security, um, as well as getting our safety certifications for 61.508 and so forth, so that people can know that they can take and trust and work with it from an from a certification perspective. Thanks for sharing those predictions. Uh, if I ask you, what is going to be the focus for the project in 2023? The focus for the project in the 2023 is, you know, we will be continuing to advance um, all sorts of technology areas and incorporate new communication stacks and information, um, getting it so that we are ready for the safety certification is one of the project focuses this year. Um, another of which is making sure we have um, our project coordinated enough to be able to work with the scaling of people and more people being added to the project over time. Um, you know, we're seeing, you know, hundreds more people showing up pretty much each release. We have about 100 new people showing up. Um, and so there are people that are coming into Zephyr, finding it useful, extending it for us and being able to scale and work on that scaling problem is, I think, one of the challenges we need for development. And then quite the other thing the project could be working on is, um, making sure that our documentation has kept up with the change in paces of the code. So I, we've got focuses on you know, growing the community and managing the developers ecosystem as well as the resources for developers. What are the challenges that you see uh, are going to be there? You talked about adoption is growing. So a lot of new players are coming who will be using Zephyr project. So talk a bit about what are the challenges that you see will be there and how Zephyr project can help some you know these players to kind of navigate through these challenges? We have a lot of good start material out there on the thing uh, on our site already, but I think where we're looking at is getting that next level of training and making it easier for people to understand how to move from being sort of like, oh, I've got my first little experiment going to actually contributing into the upstream project 
And so figuring out how we can make that part of it easier is definitely a focus area for the group. Kate, thank you so much for taking time out today and uh, share these predictions, focus of the project, and of course the challenges ahead and how you folks will be helping the industry there. Uh, and as usual, I would love to have you back on the show uh, to discuss the l next year, to discuss the next set of predictions, also check which of your predictions turn out to be true. So no pressure there. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. And thank you very much for um, having me on. Appreciate it. Take care.